All right, welcome back to another episode of Wellness in Depth. I am Mark Komar. I am Akil Sherman. And today we're talking about why in the scale. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. I like that. Why in the scale? Why in the scale? Uh, why- <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a why, why in the hell? hell? Right, why in the hell? I like it. Man, listen, I. Why are y'all still out there, worse like like stepping on that altar of nonsense? Right, right. You know, you just stressing oh, yourself goodness. out. You 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 freaking yourself out. You're giving yourself anxiety, and it's all for nothing. I mean, frankly, there's so many reasons why people hop on the scale. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. um, you possibly are trying to get back to a weight. That you were in in your teens and twenties, or if you're a, a mom before you had children, mm-hmm. you know how how much your body transforms once you grow a whole human, a whole person inside of you, a whole and being. you trying to get back to when I was in, uh, you was a freshman in college. What, what are you do, What are you doing? What are you doing? Imagine. Like the, the listen, the scale itself is not a great representation of progress. There's so many things happening in your body that are going to be beneficial. There, there are things what I like to call non-scale victories. There's other there are other things that you can measure that are more impactful, that are more beneficial, that are more empowering, as opposed to what that damn number on that little rectangle says. And when you embrace that, you make your fitness journey much more enjoyable. I totally agree with him, 100%. Um, I mean, a number of reasons, like he said, why, why you are choosing to use the scales because it's been the thing over the past 30 years or 40 years that said this is the easy way for me to take a measurement. Yeah. And honestly, that is the last tool, if at all, any longer a tool at all that you can use to, to measure your, your progress. Because it's not giving you the full story. The full story is being told to you in front of your face. It's always the captain obvious, you <laughs> know, and, and we don't want to look at the captain obvious. So, you know, the measurement tools are you started a journey that you weren't on before and you've been consistent for a while. Yeah. That's the first measurement tool. Right. And that's what the one that you, you measure and that's the one. Or just how at. you feel. That's the one you look at and you say, hey, cool. Then you look at, like he said, how you feel. How you feel. Your your activity with your kids, if you have kids, your activity at work, your your activity with waking up in the morning, your activity with just any anything that you do throughout the course of a day. Bending over putting your shoes on. Those are the <laughs> m- metrics that are necessary, that are the true measuring tools to... Quality of life. Yes. That will allow you to say, okay what you have put in place now yeah is actually working for you yeah the scale unfortunately is just another tool within the cog of uh industry that's trying yeah. to make freak you out trillions of dollars <laughs> and freak you out to say hey you need this to i need to i need to look at my uh my my steps to see okay if i'm healthy <laughs> that so might I'm, be some language. <laughs> Put the kids away. Put the kids away. He was about to talk it. Like <laughs> I cannot stand this stuff to to a t- The scale is number one. These uh, uh, wearables is number two. Oh, you don't like the wearables? No. Be- you know he why? Said, no. No. You know why? Why? I'm gonna tell you why. Yes, I'm hearing this for the first time too, folks. All this has is place, true enough. And I understand you got your techies out there, the people. I just got, you know, I'm, you know, if it's, if I can't measure, it, then I can't, you know, quantify it, right? And I'm trying to tell you guys, it, you can never beat nature. You can never beat the natural approach to seeing the benefit. Of global warming. You know, you can do all the numbers you want, but the, the nature is going to let you know. Okay, if we if we Quit throwing this plastic over here in this, <laughs> in this river. You know what I'm saying? If we start cleaning that up, yeah. we will see the changes, you know, with the animals. We'll see nature. Nature will let us know. Yeah, Your body true. will let you know. Like he said, we just talked about the measurements that make sense. That that will let, before, because, you know, I got to slap on my, my wearable <laughs> when I'm asleep and I wake up. You know what I'm saying? Not unless I'm wearing this at night. Some people are. Which, and I'm going to tell you right now. They still, <laughs> their body still letting them know before that wearable is. That's true. Their, their body still letting them know before that. Because the, the wearable is reading their body. Like, let's be 100. The wearable is only reading whatever measurements it can, it can take off of whatever you're you're giving off. You know what I'm saying? So if you are if you haven't been exercising for two or three weeks, and then all of a sudden now you're exercising for a month, two months straight, 
whatever that is for you, whatever the modality you choose, and you're consistent with it. If you're eating cleaner, you're not eating the fast foods or processed foods, you're eating better, you know, drinking more water, drinking more water, your body's going to let you know you're going to be more regular. Your skin is going to have a certain glow. You're, when, you're, when you're normally getting the itis after work or after a long uh, 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 WebEx meeting, you are still alert and you're still on it. That's how you know. You'll know before the, the thing alerts you. Oh, by the way, you did 20 steps today. By the way, you actually have lowered your heart rate today. And let me also say that when you when you're when those positive attributes are occurring, there are a lot of folks who were experienced with those things. Then they stepped on a scale. They didn't see the number change and they got demotivated mm -hmm. and it psychs them out. And it's like, hey, damn that scale. Listen, oh, the wow. scale is only going to tell you how much their overall product weighs. And there's a few things that you need to take into account. See, when you first start weight training, and it's, particularly if, it is, if it's been a while, your body's going to retain water in the muscles, and it's going to there's going to be an increase in glycogen in your muscles. Mm -hmm. So you're going to weigh more out the gate. Like in those first four to six weeks, when you have that new weight gain and you're like, well, why am, why is my why is the scale going up? Why did the number go up when I'm exercising? Because by the way, guess what is happening? Your clothes are fitting better, body composition is changing, but then you see the number on the scale, it goes up, and now you're demotivated, you're pissed off, and you're angry, or you're sad, and you quit right before you're about to experience those other benefits that you were looking for. See, a lot of Unfortunately, a lot of folks, a lot of trainers will tell you, well, that's muscle being built. You don't build muscle in three or four weeks. That's not, you don't build muscle that fast. Um, and then muscle does not, quote unquote, weigh more than fat. What muscle does, it weighs more than fat by volume mm -hmm. because the fibers are tighter mm -hmm. and they take up less space. Right. So if you have a cup of muscle and a cup of fat, that cup of muscle would be heavier. So muscle weighs more than fat by volume. That's, I have to feel like I got to complete that yes. sentence. This is wellness and depth. Say, <laughs> say it one more time. Say it one more time. A cup of muscle weighs more than a cup of fat. Muscle weighs more than fat by volume. By volume. One pound equals one pound. However, because muscle is tighter and tight, tighter packed, you can fit more muscle in the same space because muscle fat is just loose and all over the place. Right. Muscle is tight and wrapped together so you can get more of it in that same space. So, okay, so it's so muscle weighs more than fat by volume. All right, but my point though is that when you're just start, yeah, I've got all molested his water. Yeah, that, that ah, was it. Thank you. just had his whole water, got his whole water situation. I'm sorry, water. <laughs> I'm sorry, water. But what I want you guys to take away from this is that the scale is not a good bit, it's not a good indicator of your success. What is a good indicator, and what I tell my clients take pictures every week in the same outfit at the on the same day at the same time or take your measurements those things will give you a better uh idea of how you're doing because here's the thing especially if you're new to exercise and fitness like in three weeks here's the thing normal fat loss is one or two pounds a week N despite what tv shows have portrayed mm -hmm. you know if you are a larger individual like if you're 50 60 70 pounds overweight then yeah, you're going to lose more in the beginning right that's going to happen. But you're not going to continue to lose 20 pounds every month. That's mm -hmm. not how that happens. Mm -hmm. And so if you're new to fit, new to exercise and fitness, um, and, and and you don't have that much to, to lose, it's not going to be very motivating to hop on the scale and see a few ounces being lost every day. That's not exciting. But meanwhile, your blood, your cholesterol is improving, your blood pressure is imp improving, your inflammation has been reduced, you're getting better sleep, you have more energy, you're thinking sharper, and these benefits, these non-scale victories are really what's more important. And I know there's some people out there who are like, I'm going to weigh, I'm going to hop on that scale, and that's fine. You, listen, it's your life, it's your body, live your life. We're just trying to give you wellness on a deeper level to help you understand how you can make this process much easier and more supportive for yourself. I would say, if there's any place ever in the history of humanity where we say numbers don't lie, <laughs> and I say numbers do lie, it'd be the scale. And That's you a good correct, point. You correct, right if I'm wrong. That's but a good I, point. I, was, I know we always, you know, the, throughout history of mankind, we're like, numbers don't lie. Two plus two is four, three plus three is six, whatever, whatever, right? But when it comes down to the scale, 
that's one place where those numbers do lie. They can mislead you. Absolutely. They, 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 they lie. They do. And like you said, everything that we've already just talked about for the past few minutes is just, yes, those are not those are not the quantifiable measures you want to take. They're not. That's not the one that you want to rest your hat on, especially when you've done. We're, we're, we're saying to you, we're actually championing you and say, hey, kudos for doing the fucking work. Yeah. Pride, work is more important. You're right, right. Pride yourself on that. Stay with that because you need that because like he articulated, there is a process to this. Yes. It's not going to happen in two or three weeks. It's no. not going to happen in the first six to eight weeks. It, you will start seeing better changes within the first two or three weeks. Yeah. But it's what calculations are you using? If you're using the ones that we talked about, yeah. those are the calculations that will allow you to stay motivated. But if you hop on that fucking scale within the first, within the first eight weeks, you're going to be disappointed. You're going to drive yourself nuts. You're going to be disappointed, and and that's just the real of the game. And I and and so that's what we're speaking to you guys about. Don't look at the scale. Don't focus on the scale. Matter of fact, if you honestly, to be honest with you, not unless you're just that numbers person and you are at a point with your uh, wellness uh, paradigm to where you're at a point where you're, you're you're at that I can now adjust between four or five pounds yeah. and I'm, I'm I'm you know I'm trying to get a little more stride here and I just want to see where I'm at. Cool, but if the you're the average person, average person out there, which is majority of us yeah. out there. Throw that bitch out. Because let me say this, you know, for my ladies out there, for my ladies out there, there's a lot of you all who are on the other side of 35 who are aspiring to get back to this weight that you were in, that you were at in your late teens, early 20s, like I said before, kids, or, or, guess what? You didn't even do weight training back that when you were in your 20s. <laughs> so it's like the number that you have in your head like once you engage in squats and because you want a tighter butt you want tighter thighs you want your back to be nice and slim you want the arms tone so that requires weight resistance activities can i just say can i just say what you just said there was so honest. i'm getting back to it let that, me get back to it though can i get back no, no, to go it ahead, go ahead go ahead sorry the body that the number you have in your head about what you are trying to aspire and, and where you're trying to go doesn't even equal the the body that you're trying to get it's like if you were in your 20s and you didn't engage in any kind of weight training and now you're 30, 40 pounds past that, and you're, but you're trying to get back to that, but you didn't engage in weight training, like, that shit ain't adding up. That shit ain't, <laughs> like, that shit ain't even adding up. I just, he said that so real, and I'm glad you brought that up. When you were 25 or 24, and you were at that weight, you were out partying, you were out kicking, let's be 1,000, you were out yes. kicking it. Yes. You were just happened to be 24, 25. Right. And everything burns off like that at that time. It just does. But he's absolutely correct. If you weren't even engaging in resistance training at that time, the bias you're looking for, you haven't. Even, you don't even know what that is yet. You have no idea, and your body doesn't even know what that is. You don't even you, like. We don't even fully grow until we're like 25. So at the end of the day, you're absolutely correct. Like, take your time, ladies and gents. Take your time. And this goes for gentlemen too. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna tell you guys like this too. The body that you had. Backing, because on the flip side, yeah. because men generally get on the guys, get on the guys. Yeah, men, we generally. I played college basketball. You know, I was a scholarship player, so I can speak to you. So you know, I know what it is, right? Scholarship, four years. You know, D two, uh, played. The body that I had did well. I actually have it because I actually stay consistent. But I'm saying majority of guys who actually left that and went into the workforce, and you know, you have two kids. You know, you may have gone through a divorce. You know, in a family, another mm, family. Yeah. Real talk, right? Yeah. That's life. You know, you haven't exercised like that type of training when you were doing two a days, waking up at four in the morning, going to the track, and then you had to go back for your evening. You know, training on the field or on on basketball court or baseball field. And you were playing. Right, and you were actually playing. You not you haven't done that in fifteen years, <laughs> at least. At min at minimum. <laughs> So you cannot try to sit here with your ego, with your mentality of this moxie of uh, type A and just, you know, macho man. Think that you're going to replace or get back to that by just doing 30 Talk minutes or 40 minutes. I'm going to start on the pre-core. <laughs> My knees are shot. I got lower back issues. My hips are tight in the oh. mug. <laughs> My hips are tight. My piriformis is shot. Oh. Like, bro, you're not going to get back to that. Mm. Okay. 
you have to be realistic in the game. Don't get on a scale. Don't sit there and, and, and please stop talking to your lady and causing rifts between you and your lady because you're telling her what she needs to do because what you used to do. Oh, oh I'm going to just I'm gonna throw it out there right now, yeah, too. Yeah, you're right. You're so right. The scale be messing everybody up. Everybody the scale be throwing. about to get you divorced. The scale <laughs> about to get you divorced. Right. You about to be on the couch eating hungry man dinner. <laughs> Chillax, bro. <laughs> Chillax. Yo, be for real. Like, yo, fall back. Look, at the end of the day, stop using the scale as your measurement yeah. stop using it as the tool that you're going to base yourself because you because males we do because our, our testosterone production is more our muscles formulate more so yes you can do a little bit and lose quicker than your lady can but that's if he's an endomorph i'm sorry if he's a if he's a meso or an ectomeso because there's a lot of endomorph men out there who are who are still struggling with body fat yeah but the problem is though uh -oh. you know the problem is though what's the problem those brothers will still hop on the scale when they with their ladies and they'll be like, look, I didn't have five pound gain loss <laughs> in the past three days. You know this? Hold on. Because again, the ego. Yeah. And he didn't head of the, he didn't head of the house. He like, baby, I need you to go on this with me. <laughs> and she's like, I've been doing the same thing you're doing, but I ain't lost. Yeah. You know, because it's scale. And then he all on her head about, yeah. You see what I'm saying? I'm, yeah. talking, about, I'm talking about this. I'm talking about what's real. Yeah. And look, guys, this is what you, you wellness and death. We on some real shit. We're not on no games, right? We know we've been we've been through this. We've been through the conversations. We've been through, you know, the 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 heartache with the with the brother and, and my homie, my client, you know, and, and his wife coming over to me talking about, you know, she got a problem. Or, you know, I've been through this yeah. in a good way. You know what I'm saying? It, it, guys, ladies, all we're saying is throw the scale out. That's yeah. not the that's not the the the, the measurement, the you, measurement you want to use. No. The measurement you want to use is my endomorph, mesomorph, ectomorph, or my hybrids. <laughs> the scale you want, to, the measurement you want to use is how do you feel? How do you how do you feel in your clothes? How's your energy level? Are you regular in you know when it comes to uh, excretion of body uh, bodily fluids, waste. bodily waste? These are the things you want to measure on a consistent How's basis. How's your sleep? How's your sleep? How's your engagement with your stress levels when you're, are you agitated quickly or less quickly? Yeah. These are the things that will give you the understanding. If you're sitting down having a real conversation with your baby, don't worry about it. We've been at it for two weeks. Don't worry about it. Your numbers are your numbers, but you know, I'm here with you. I love you. That's the measurement yeah. of that you want to check on because that's the thing that's going to let you know, look, I'm doing the right things to be successful and it's going to be long term. It's going to be long lasting. It's going to be sustainable. Sustainable. And that's what we're all about here on this platform. Absolutely. Sustainability at a high level. Yes. With your health and wellness. And that's what's going to allow you to know that you're making the changes you want to see. And we guarantee if you stay with that over the course of five, six, eight, 12 weeks, hands down, whatever your goal Three is. To five months. Uh -huh. couple, a couple months. Right. Like some of y'all, and that's, I, I'll just say this because I don't want to belabor the point, but some of y'all have been living an unhealth, unhealthy lifestyle for two decades, and then you hop on a scale after four weeks. What you looking for? You just got started. Get yourself off that scale. It's like I'm about, I'm about to be rich in like two minutes. I just started saving my money. <laughs> I just I just put away my check. I'm about to be rich. I'm about to be Bezos. Sorry. About to be Bezos. <laughs> About to be Elon Musk. Come, about to be out here, Elon. Come fucks with me, Elon. Oh God! I just put away fifty percent of my check. I'm about to be rich. <laughs> you just did that. Is that life. how finances work? <laughs> is that how well? Is that how that health well? Work? Is that how well? Is that, is that health and wellness works? That's not how that works. Exactly. So he's absolutely correct, guys. Uh, don't don't think it's gonna happen overnight. But be willing to look at the right measurements. Absolutely. Throw away the scale. Hop on the right measurements, and you'll be just fine. All right. We'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you for your time. We'll Thanks talk for to you watching. Again.